Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Good morning, I'm Jeff Kellum, uh, your host today on Encounter, a half hour conversation with folks who are making this a better place in which to live and move and have our being. Today we're gonna be talking about promise and not so much promises made or promises uh, broken, but more the idea of finding hope. You know, when somebody joins the Rumble Ponies from another team, uh, somebody like the manager might say they show great promise. Or when someone new is joining the office uh, in your company and they say, well, they, they have a lot of promise. Or when a kid in school is not quite making it the, the way their gifts and talents uh, might project, they have a lot of promise. So that kind of promise and that kind of hope joining together uh, can help build something in our area called the Promise Zone. And we're gonna be talking about that community effort that brings together academia and uh, kids uh, from ages, uh, I guess from kindergarten up through high school. Uh, our guests today are two people who are part of the Promise Zone. Our, our uh, director of community schools, Luann Keita, is with us. And then Liz Anderson is an associate professor of teaching, learning, and educational leadership at BU. And, and just now, the program director at the Central Western New York Community Schools Technical Assistance Center. That's all the time we have now. <laughs> uh, let's talk about, I know that there are five promise zones in New York State and Broome County is among them. I, I, are we the newest? We are the newest. And let's define what a promise zone is. Promise Zone is, um, it comes from New York State, it's through the Office of Mental Health and um, what it is is um, taking, they put some funding, not a lot, but they put some funding to bring promise. So they, they really identify the other four Promise Zones are in one area. So they're w working in like Syracuse works with Syracuse City Schools. Our leaders in Broome County said we did not want to pick one school because we felt our whole county needed more promise and more yeah. um, hope. So we convinced them to make it a countywide approach. So the money comes from New York State, uh, Office of Mental Health comes to Broome County Mental Health, and then they partner with Broome Tioga Boses and Binghamton University, and the three of us then are building, uh, helping schools and supporting them in building community schools that address uh, the needs of their children and helping them to graduate. And by community schools, that mm -hmm. seems like every school's in a community, mm -hmm. but it, this, mm -hmm. does that have a particular focus? Community schools, schools are, have been bringing uh, services into schools. They partner with, uh, with um, their community all the time. So that's not a new concept. What a community school really is, is starting to look at it strategically and aligning all those resources, really leveraging uh, what's available. Our model has the university assisted piece. So uh, we actually are leveraging the Binghamton University students. So taking their learning needs for classes and bringing them to schools and working with kids so they're learning and getting their degree but then we're also serving kids and using faculty members and uh, bringing like classrooms to the schools and actually helping um, teach classrooms with uh, students in the schools so yeah. it's really leveraging um, opportunity and then aligning it so that it's all kind of um, uh, uh, there's continuity and there's building um, on um, from one year to the next so that everybody's kind of working towards the same goal and this is very practical education for a university student mm -hmm, to, to mm -hmm. be in the classroom but right. then assist uh, in, in building an educational structure in a school that it used to be school was at the ABCs right but right. now it's dealing with the whole person absolutely right. absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. and that would extend uh, in, in the introduction of the program I talked about from 
kindergarten Absolutely. run it through high school mm -hmm. and we're actually uh, part of right. what Liz has been doing we're adding an early childhood component as well because we know that before kids start kindergarten they also need to um, parents aren't always in, um, know how to be that teacher so that they come to school ready so it's all about really right. making sure uh -huh. that um, that when they come into school helping uh, families feel really connected to the school so that mm -hmm. school doesn't feel like this foreign um, like I don't know what to do with it so really really um, starting as young as we can to make those connections. So yeah. instead of watching cartoons at home mm -hmm. or, or playing video games, mm -hmm. parents and their preschool children can be doing some things that are going to begin right. to build mm -hmm. for a good learning environment for mm -hmm. them as they progress. How does that work? Well, and I think that within early childhood, you know, first of all, we know that the first few years are the critical years for brain development. And so school districts recognize that when children come to their universal mm -hmm. pre-K program, if they have one, or kindergarten, um, that they've already had many experiences in their lives. And school districts want to ensure and help support families in having rich early learning experiences. Um, and so early childhood education, as you can imagine, I think of it like pieces of fabric in a bag that, that is ready to become a patchwork quilt. Hmm. So you have daycare centers, you have family child care centers, you have uh, pre-K programs, some of them are uh, you know, in um, religious based organizations, some of them are in the schools already, and yet somehow bringing those together and so the community schools approach says, you know, how do we create stronger linkages between these early childhood programs, and there are many of them, mm -hmm. and our K-12 system? How do we ensure that families feel part of a school community, as Luann mm -hmm. said, right from when, when their child is born? Mm -hmm. And so this is relatively new to school districts, and the community schools approach really embraces this seamless sort of uh, birth to age five transition and then right into the K-12 system. Mm -hmm. So if that's the patchwork, what is the thread or what is the, the stitching that holds it all together? Well, and I think going back to what Luann said, you know, a community school's model isn't a program, it's a set of partnerships mm -hmm. in, in different places. So it brings together uh, these partnerships. And so in, in my thinking, the thread really is the partnerships, mm -hmm. partnerships with community, partnerships with family, partnerships within schools, across disciplines. Um, so a broader set of partnerships. Uh, and as Luann mentioned, they may be school linked, they may be school based, but it's really looking at a new set that comes together that provides really a very strong thread mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that not only creates a patchwork quilt, for early childhood, but in many other areas as well. Sure. Mm -hmm. And the schools that you're working with now, um, can, can you name them? Uh, is it too long a list to? Uh, no, we're working with Binghamton City Schools, Whitney Point, uh, Union Endicott, Johnson City, uh, Windsor, um, and then we are also in two of, of uh, the BOCE sites. Okay. The Do the event. schools choose to be in the promise zone, or does the promise zone choose the schools? The schools choose to be in the promise zone. So we um, we meet and we talk about, and they also choose what building we start with. So in some schools, we're in their primary building, so their K through second, third, fourth grade, uh, depending on how the school's set up. Some have chosen the high school because that's where they feel like they want to start it and they want to be able to support kids from high school on. They want to support kids all the time, but to really where sure. they're going to put the focus of the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. so. So uh, when I went to the website, and mm -hmm. we should mention that the website is uh, pr uh, bcpromisezone.org. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. BC for Broome County, bcpromisezone.org. Uh, it's, a, it's a stunning website. Mm -hmm. There's so much information there. And if you click on programs, for mm -hmm. example, right. what are some of the things that folks will find there? 
They'll find all of our programming really comes through uh, partnerships and then supported by our college students. So right. um, they become uh, a part of the, they're also part of that thread. So there might be things like after school programs. Uh, many of our schools, at least one day a week, depending on where they're at in transportation, host something after school that gives homework help. There might be mentoring that goes on. There might be tutoring, um, bringing, again, our college students are great tutors and academic support. Um, we have have things uh, that are, we do some summer programming, we also have some drop-in centers, our older um, uh, high school uh, has a place where kids can kind of come and land and say I'm having a bad day, I don't quite know what to do, and it's really hard for me to go to math if I'm already in a bad spot, so sure. getting them kind of sure. ready to go in and learn. And then we bring in all kinds of partners mm -hmm. that do programming, so Cornell Cooperative Extension might come in and do some nutrition, we've had um, Mothers and Babies is doing some things with uh, around healthy relationships. Relationships, so really um, optimizing their um, their um, their expertise, but bringing it into the mm -hmm. school. And again, it's all about being strategic and really connecting in a way that helps yeah. everybody yeah. Um, understand. Well, here we are in the summertime. What mm -hmm. are some of the summer things that, that are happening? We have th uh, right now. We have three summer zones that um, are running. So we're in Whitney Point, Johnson City, and Binghamton um, High School, and they are programs. We do a tiered approach to our summer programs. So it's middle school students that are we call our, um, our our participants, and then we hire high school youth mentors. So they it's through our BOCI summer um, employment program. So they actually are getting paid, but they're learning work skills and they're mm -hmm. learning to be role models for their younger. Um, and, and it's um, they actually are helping their own um, like they can't work with a younger kid to say stay on target with doing your homework and then not be doing their own homework sure, so it really sure. helps them to start going wow I got to listen mm -hmm. to what I'm telling them to do <laughs> um, and then we uh, have a, a, a grant through the Community Foundation of South Central New York that um, allows us to hire college students that become our team leaders and so it's a tiered approach and what happens is organically there's conversations about what's it like to be in high school or what's it like to be in college so now kids are are, are being are connecting in ways that I say all the time they look at me and I was never young they don't ever think that I was in high school yes, yeah. but if they look at their high school peers they'll go oh so I get it when you say math is going to be hard but here's how I got through it or is this a mm -hmm. daily thing that they're going to or mm -hmm. a one-time program or? no it's daily uh, right now this week we're doing orientation with our high school mentors and our college leaders so getting them ready Next week, for four weeks, we'll have uh, the middle schoolers that will join us. It's a Monday through Thursday. And then on August 9th, we'll have a nice celebration at Binghamton University that will celebrate all the learning that they've mm. done. And we have a STEAM focus. So it's science, yeah. technology, engineering, arts, and math. So there's a theme that they do, and they'll do activities around it. They don't realize that it's education because it's fun stuff, but they're really keeping <laughs> their mind engaged. Um, yeah. And it addresses yeah, summer learning laws. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it gives them experiences that some kids may not have over the summer so they yeah. will do some field trips with them and um, and then it's just a place and and some of them because of the age they're really too old for babysitters but they're not really old enough to be home so parents are really appreciative that they have a place that's safe that's um, yes. supervised yeah. but yet it's fun and it's not um, that they don't have to fight with sure. them every morning to sure. come to us. So. Liz uh, you're an associate professor at BU this must be a, a wonderful experience for your students to become involved Absolutely. in hands-on yes. education. Yes. But tell me a little bit about that. Um, I think that you know, clinically rich teacher preparation is something that Binghamton University is really committed to, and the partnership with Promise mm -hmm. Zone has really created sort of a vehicle for uh, fostering that. Um, I can speak for myself specifically as a teacher educator. Uh, one project in particular, and I think going back to the conversation mm -hmm. about programs, um, the other one that I would just add is a lot around family engagement. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so.